Chances are, if you're in the computer science space, then you've probably heard of sites like LeetCode. Now, these specialize in competitive coding problems and over the years have built up a bit of a culture around developers grinding out these problems, especially when they're preparing for interviews. But today I wanted to dive into what these kinds of problems actually will and won't do for you, not only when you're trying to land a job, but also as a software engineer. Realistically, this is why most people are doing these kinds of problems, and even looking on LeetCode's homepage at the bottom, it states that LeetCode is all about helping developers land their dream jobs. And it's no secret that a lot of companies ask questions that are similar to ones that you might find on LeetCode, or straight off the site itself. Looking at the companies with tagged questions, a lot of the big name tech companies are represented, but there's also a lot of other companies here that are outside of that fang type bubble. And while there's no way to know heading into an interview what kinds of questions you're going to face, a lot of companies like to ask the same types of questions related to data structures, algorithms, and problem solving. So especially if you know you're going to be interviewing for a company that likes to ask a lot of certain types of questions, then this is probably one of the best reasons for using LeetCode to brush up on those topics. If you're someone who struggles to solve problems on a specific topic, then using LeetCode can be a great way to address this weakness. Obviously, this is going to be helpful for interviewing, but it's also useful for students who are trying to learn the concepts, as well as people who are early in career. The instant feedback nature of these sites can really help you reinforce whether or not you're getting a concept, whether it's sorting algorithms or dynamic programming or anything else. Instead of just practicing these concepts on your own, using something like LeetCode gives you a huge bank of problems that you can go against to practice slightly different variations of the same kind of idea, as well as test cases that let you verify if you're actually doing things correctly. Admittedly, this is probably not the biggest reason for using a site like LeetCode, but if you know you struggle with a certain kind of problem and you want to get some extra practice, then this can be a great way to do it. The other thing about LeetCode is that it's not just about solving the problems, it's about doing it efficiently in terms of both time and space. If you're doing LeetCode and you're just solving problems and moving on right away, then you're missing out on a huge opportunity for learning how to optimize your code. And with how many different languages LeetCode supports, this is a great way to not only get some practice using a new language, but also learning how to write performant code in that language. Now, for a lot of problems, LeetCode doesn't tell you how to write better code, other than through providing benchmarks of how your code stacks up against other people's, but thanks to the community on LeetCode providing their own write-ups and solutions, this can give you a good idea of how to write a good solution and in your preferred language. Especially if you're trying to ramp up on a new language or just tighten up the way you write your code in a language you already know, this can be a great way of doing that, at least for certain aspects of the language. LeetCode's problems are generally pretty small in scope, testing your comprehension of a specific set of topics in a solution that a lot of times only takes 30 minutes or less. Now, real-world programming does involve working through some of these issues, just not nearly to the extent that it's practiced for interviews. You won't get practice solving large-scale problems, or designing an architecture, or writing code that has to be clean and maintainable, all of which are big parts of being a software engineer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not what LeetCode is meant for, but what that means is even if you can solve every single problem on LeetCode, it doesn't mean you're going to be an effective software engineer. For as many companies do use this style of question in their interviews and in their coding challenges, a lot of other companies don't use this at all. This is especially true as you get into more senior positions. If you're a principal engineer, there's a good chance that you probably won't be tested on any of these types of questions in your interview, or if you are, it's only going to be a small piece of what you're being assessed on. Looking back at the job searching I did when I was in college, a lot of the coding challenges I got did test this style of question, but I also had a lot of interviews that didn't have any coding component at all. Sometimes these interviews were purely behavioral, where they just wanted to know about your understanding of different computer science concepts, or sometimes it was just hypothetical questions meant to see the way that you think through problems not even related to computer science. It's really just a matter of how a company, or sometimes even a specific manager, wants to evaluate their candidates. While grinding leak code isn't going to hurt you, if it's the only thing that you prepare on, you might find that you walk into an interview and realize that all the hard work you've been putting in isn't going to help you in that interview. So much of software engineering has nothing to do with coding or architecture, it's understanding the problems that need to be solved in the first place. As a junior engineer, you might get handed things to do or to fix by more senior engineers, but as you get more experience, you're gonna tackle things that have more ambiguity and require a deeper understanding of the problem space and the users that you're designing for and the actual challenge 
is it the code implementation of it? The best engineers at the top companies generally don't spend their whole day coding for eight hours straight because coding speed generally isn't the bottleneck. They spend a lot of time figuring out the work that needs to be done, how it should be distributed amongst the team, and how it should be prioritized to guarantee the long-term success and health of the system. And this is why earlier in your career, doing lead code is probably more relevant to what your job will entail, but over time, it's going to be less and less useful. All right, if you guys enjoyed that video and you haven't already, make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.